Hey everybody, this is Birch, and uh, uh, several of you, quite a few of you, sent me these tweets from uh, Mags, and uh, you know, I, it's it's good, by the way, in a video if I just get right to it, because in theory you clicked on a thumbnail and a title, so you know what this video is sort of going to be about, unless I decide to name it something really esoteric and dumb, which happens too. But anyway, let's assume I I you know thought through what I was going to name this video uh, when I posted it. Anyway, a uh, number of you sent me these tweets from Mags, and basically the tweets are. Um, you know, I, it does. It, it falls along the lines of, "Does my life have meaning?" Um, I, I don't think anybody cares about my work, etc. And um, several of people were like, "Oh man, you know, this is what this is what Max gets for, you know, nobody cares about the Superman book that was written." And um, and I was like, "No, no, actually, uh, it has nothing to do with uh, Superboy or any of these other things." Max was talking about in this tweet that uh it, it was about the the fact that you know Megs was able to go viral for saying just just you know it, it, the big common ones is here's the american presidents that they were trans and then here kurt cobain is trans and a good way by the way it's it's it, the kurt cobain is trans thing is just bait because you know in seattle it's been oh uh, god it's like almost 30 years and or yeah, actually it's been 30 years and, uh, you know, people liked Kurt Cobain. He was, he was a, you know, hometown hero, celebrity, whatever it was. I mean, people legitimately liked him and, uh, still a lot of people hate Courtney Love over that thing. Um, but you know, he was, he was beloved and, uh, you know, as he killed before his time or rather committed suicide before his time. Anyway, there's just people who really, really love Kurt. And so it was always bait. You, you know, you basically go in and you insult Kurt Cobain which is what Mags was doing because Kurt wasn't trans and everybody knew it. And it was like, it was a good way to just kind of bait and taunt people. Um, and so that's, that's what was going on. And, and so Mags used to get a lot of attention uh, on Twitter for this. People would, you know, would uh, uh, flip out and it was mainly negative attention. People would retweet it. Like, look what an absolute thorough clown. And then, you know, some people would come in because they would see the attention. They try to glom onto it. They're like, yeah, Kurt was trans. And it it just turned it was it was a bullshit time for bullshit people. Um, but it, it would get attention and it would get engagement. And Mags liked getting engagement. That's why Mags posted the whole I was trying to trans Superboy and I was backward transing him. And, you know, I and then posted the pitch knowing that, you know, now Megs has got kind of a little violin out now for, you know, well, Marie Jevons is mad at me. But I mean, a, a lot of people, many people at DC are mad at Max. I mean, I've been spoilers. Lots and lots of the editors are mad at Max because one of the cardinal rules of comics is that, you know, when the editor gives you notes or, you know, you have to make, you know, do something in the story, you don't, you know, air the dirty laundry. It's, it's why, uh, and, and, you know, so it's why Greg Capullo, for example, airing dirty laundry about the uh, colorist is 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 a negative. It just it makes people in comics look bad. And I mean, you know, people in comics should probably worry about looking bad more than they do. Quite frankly, uh, you got Nick Lowe running around running his mouth. So I mean, you know, he, he, and Wacker, but Stephen Wacker before that. Anyway, um, but you know, a good way to piss off people in comics is to you know talk about this pitch. Or talk about tricks you were trying to pull on your editor without them noticing. Like I was trying to secretly trans, you know, a you know a major character inside DC without them knowing. They don't they don't take kindly to that, as they say. So anyway, um, you know, a bunch of people assume Mags was talking about comics, but what Mags was really talking about was, you know, the fact that you know can't go viral anymore. Which which again, you took yourself off Twitter. A platform with a lot of people who tend to, you know, bait and incent people to go viral. And you went to Blue Sky because Elon Musk was going to, I don't know, sneak into your home and lock you up. Uh, and you know, and and so you you took you took all your audience away. You took you took millions and millions and millions of people who, quite frankly, the thing that Twitter is really for, and you could see it right now as we head toward the election, is for shit posting. That's that's what Twitter is for. It's 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 a shit posting platform and. It's for people to meme and dunk on each other and just do crazy shit. If you get yourself too hung up in that and too attached to all that, um, you will drive yourself insane. But that's that's really what Twitter is. So if you want cheap engagement through bullshit, Twitter is your place to be. 
And so if you on principle say, I'm not going to be on Twitter anymore because the, the Tesla car guy is, is MAGA, then, you know, you're, you're, you, that's fine. Good principled approach, but you're going to take away your audience of uh, shit posters. So, you know, it, your mileage may vary work accordingly, Western man. What, what can you do? Um, anyway, so, uh, I, I broke it to, you know, I, it's like, yeah, no, no, it has nothing to do with the comics. The person is just, you know, sad because, you know, they're not getting attention. This is dopamine on social media. This is literally someone who's complaining that they no longer get attention on a completely, you know, useless platform that where, you know, fame runs in five second intervals and it's all just pure dopamine. And quite frankly, if you really want to get horny, like, okay, I'm not suggesting you want to do this. Okay. But, uh, you know, another guy who, who regularly goes through these, uh, kind of psychological breakdowns on Twitter is Joe Glass. Um, or maybe he's on Blue Sky as well. I don't know. But it's regular. Like, does anybody care that I'm here? Does anybody care that I'm out here? Anyway, next time you post some crazy idea, again, I'm not suggesting you do this. It would be cruel. It would be wrong. Don't do this. The next time you post some idea, like maybe I should do an OnlyFans, go to one of these um, engagement for purchase sites, and you could basically buy 2,000 likes for like $5. Okay, it will cost you nothing. It was a cup of a Starbucks coffee. And you could basically point, you know, this bot farm at that tweet to like it. And, you know, what's going to happen is, you know, Joe would wake up the next morning and be like, holy shit, 2,000 likes is more likes than I've ever gotten on anything before. And, and you would send him spiraling into doing OnlyFans for the next, you know, three years because the, you know, the, the dopamine hit of getting all those likes would alter his life that's sad and weird um and bad but but anyway that's where we are it's i'm not picking i'm I, I get you know to some extent i'm picking on those two but but um a uh, lots of people this is hardly confined to those two there's people of all you know shapes sizes political aspirations everyone that is so horny addicted to social media that they're willing to debase themselves and make crazy decisions in order to get attention from it but what does this all have to do with comics? Well, it, I, I, I'm going to pose a question to you, and I'll try and answer it, but I'm hoping some of you have the idea, which is we have a lot of people in comics right now, quite frankly, a lot of them, mainly the writers, this, isn't, this doesn't necessarily plague the artists, but definitely the writers, who are there for reasons other than writing comics. They're writing comics because they want attention. They're writing comics because maybe they want a Netflix deal, although I don't think there's that many of those around anymore. But they're there because of the dopamine hit of being able to have a comic. And that's why you get, you know, creators who will, you know, want to, quote unquote, dunk on the chuds in their comic because they're not really interested in writing comics. They're interested in cheap attention that they can then parade around and, you know, feel like a celebrity for five seconds. And and I think you have too many people in comics right now who are in that category. So the question is, how do we make comics attractive to people who want to write comics and get paid for it and don't really care about the dopamine yet, don't really care about social media, don't care how many likes or, tweet or retweets or any of that that they get? They, that's not what they're interested in. They're interested in you know, writing comics because they, they love writing comics. They love having stories out there. They love seeing their books on other people's shelves. They love meeting fans who ask them questions about where the story is going because they're so excited about it. They love, you know, paying homage and helping these, these characters that maybe they grew up with as children. We want those people in comics. And, and that's why there's been creators who are truly passionate about things. So I don't always love their work. I don't always think they, they do the best things, write the best stuff, but, um, they, they clearly love comics. They truly love comics. I, Philip Kennedy Johnson is a guy who, if you ever talk to him, um, he loves comics. Jim's Up loves comics. So even if you, you, you know, I, I when Jim Zub was doing the uh, Murder World comics and Marvel was really kind of screwing him a little bit on how that was promoted, I didn't really want to read an arcade Murder World story. I, I mean, I, I feel like arcades played out. They haven't done a lot of interesting things with them and do we really need a murder world story that doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things? Eh, not really. But I support Jim Zub and I support him doing it because regardless of whether the comic hook sounded great to me, 
Um, I knew that I generally like what Jim Zub writes. So I, you know, even if I wasn't excited about the project, I'd probably enjoy reading it. And also the guy's so damn genuine and honest about loving comics. And I want to support people who are there to do comics, not there to, you know, I, I, there are creators and, uh, I can, I can think of two that actually, you know, tried to negotiate a lower page rate for themselves in exchange for the publisher allowing them to put their Twitter handle in the comic in the hopes that that would generate more followers. And, and I want think about that again for a moment. You can, you can, like I mentioned before, literally go out and buy followers for nothing, for, for pennies, you know, for the cost of one Marvel page, uh, you can buy like 5,000 followers on Twitter. Like what is like you're, you're, what you're willing to take money out of your own pocket. You're willing to set a new lower base for yourself in your page rate in order to promote your social media handle. That's clearly sending a message of what you're actually interested in. So how do we get creators like Zub or like many others, there are many others who are there because they love comics. Well, for me, I mentioned it before. I think, you, you know, one thing you do is you do a one-two punch of you pay a lot more and you demand a lot more. So, you, you know, you, you raise the page rates for everyone. Big comics really a destination place. You actually can, you know, feed yourself and live a good, a good fun life as a writer in comics. You can actually do well, be a baller. And maybe not, that's too much. But anyway, you could do well in comics. In exchange, though, we're going to ask for you to be super professional. We're going to ask you to research things. You're going to ask you to, pay attention to continuity, put some real effort into it. We're going to ask you to, you know, have your eye on the prize. Like it's a job you want to keep. That's one thing you can do. And the other thing I think you could do is you got to start inside the company. You got to start by hiring editors who want to actually succeed, who want to have high selling comics, who, who find that part of their duty. And maybe you do that by giving them stock or, or rather, you give them options based on their sales. If they sell well, they get some options in the company. I, I don't know. But you got to give them some incentive that says, if I do better, I get more money. But that's not enough if the person doesn't care about money. So that that's where it goes back to hiring. You've got to hire people who, yeah, I hate to say it this way, are greedy. Greedy about their money, greedy about their time, and greedy about their love of comics and the characters. You need people who actively get bothered if you are taking, you know, if you're, if you're basically taking time away from them to write and promote their comic that like the, I want people who are annoyed if they're not, uh, you know, if, if that's not happening, I want people who, uh, you know, will, will push because they, they want to raise next year because it's so obvious they should have one because they've, you know, raised the sales of the comic they've been put on by 50%. Like I want people who are thinking about their work that way. They, they know they're worth it. They know they do good things and they, you know, should be paid a premium for that. And they, they want anybody who's going to get in the way of them producing good work out of the way. So I, I think, I think that a lot of it goes to hiring. I think you got to hire good editors. I think you got to then translate the editors into hiring good creators. I think, you know, and, and you could never do this because freedom of speech and everything else, but you do probably maybe need, I, I mean, I, again, you could never actually do this, you know, I, I, really, fully. Um, somebody would sue you. But if, if you're an editor and you're bringing on new writers to the company, right? Let's say you're, let's say, you're, you know, if Tom Brevoort was fired, you're put in charge of the X line, and you want to bring some brand new talent nobody has ever heard of. So you're out talent scouting, and you're out trying to find some, some people, and you find a couple people that seem really good, put some good pitches in, you think it's going to be great. I would, uh, again, wouldn't be legal, but I would put in their contract, yeah, you don't get to do social media for, for a year and a half. Sorry, for the first year and a half, I want nose to the grindstone. Like, I, like I would do a trade like, hey, I'm willing to give you a five-year contract to, to be on this book. Huge contract, long-term safety net security on this book, and I really want you to dig in. But in return, you know, I want you to be radio silent I don't want you to promote. I don't want you to say fucking anything on social media for a year and a half. I want you to be completely all in on this book. And then as things are rolling smoothly, you can start to, you know, ease that in. But that's the deal. You know, you can do this book. We're going to pay you real well. We're going to give you lots of security. We're going to do all this other stuff. But 
You have to want to, you have to be in on this book. You have to want to do this book. I don't know. Um, I'm curious what your ideas are, but I think, you know, right. The, the mags thing is just sad. It's, it's somebody who's basically saying, you know, do I matter anymore because my tweets don't get likes. And that is, uh, depressing. Um, again, it's all incredibly fictional, that engagement. So it doesn't matter. And, and I, I definitely, I do know those people shouldn't be writing comics. And don't, don't twist what I say. I'm not talking about Mags' lifestyle. I'm not talking about any of the rest. I'm purely talking about people who focus on getting cheap internet attention over selling a book. That selling a book should be the number one. The, the, that's number one, two, and three in the list of priorities. You know, getting fame that way. It's harder. It's harder than going viral for saying that, uh, you know, a beloved, you know, grunge rock star was trans and you know it's going to piss off a ton of people and get you a bunch of negative attention that you can revel in granted that's a hell of a lot easier especially when you go back and do it for the 15th time but it is meaningless so go for meaningful we want i we want i want i think all of us should want creators people working on comics who are striving for meaning what do you think and how do we, how, how do you do that? How do you incent that behavior? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course. And thanks for listening.